Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my August 2022 reading wrap up. It's currently the 8th of August. I have a bunch of books. Let's get started. Dane reads. We'll start with the French ones. So, I read Asterix Max, issue numero 11. Uh, this is basically, it's a BD, a bande dessinée, um, which is like a French graphic novel. Most people have heard of Asterix. This is more like an annual, so it's also got a bunch of like puzzles in it and stuff. Um, and then some other stories. So this is Une Aventure de Jehan, Jehan Fistoe, um, Asterix Nobelix, all kinds of good stuff. Une Aventure de Benjamin et Benjamin. And I picked this up in Paris. Uh, mostly read it to improve. Sorry, my hair's going up my nose and it's tickling. Mostly read this to um, improve my French vocabulary and whatnot. Did enjoy. Probably a week four out of five for me. And then I read Les Vols Spatiaux Habitées par Isaac Asimov. So Isaac Asimov is one of my favourite authors in general. Uh, he wrote across a whole different range of genres. This is one of his non-fiction science space books. Basically about manned space flights and what the future of those will be. Um, so it's French non-fiction about space. But it's kind of aimed at kids so it wasn't too strenuous. I understood what was going on. And uh, yeah, this was a solid 4 out of 5 for me. I do eventually plan to read this in English as well. Um, but it's quite hard to get hold of these, so I was glad I managed to find these for a steal. Alright, then I read Empire of the Sun by J.D. Ballard. So this is non-fiction Second World War stuff uh, set in Shanghai. Yeah, Shanghai. Um, and it's basically non-fiction, uh, sorry, it's fiction, but based on like the, the non-fiction surrounding as. Uh, Ballard's own life. I'm doing good today, aren't I? So uh, Ballard himself was taken into a uh, prisoner of war camp um, by the Japanese and this follows the story of a young boy. I mean, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping to purely because I don't like stories that are narrated by young children. Uh, they just grate on me for whatever reason. Um, but it was cool to, to read this and it's also one of his like really well-known ones so obviously it was good to pick up for that reason as well. Um, it says on the front, the best British novel about the Second World War by The Guardian. I doubt that. Um, I can't think of one that I've read that tops it, but I just think they are probably out there. But yeah, I gave it like a strong 3.5 out of 5. Then I read The Lost King of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is continuing the Oz stories by L. Frank Baum. I don't know what point this is in the, si is in the series now. Uh, I've been reading these as kind of a, an informal buddy read with uh, Joel Swagman. We were reading one every two weeks together, and we're now just totally... We've just, you know, lost pace with each other or whatever. But yeah, I did enjoy it. By this point, I can't tell you how much of this is original and how many of them are like plot devices that have been previously used. Um, but there were some great gags in this, some great one-liners, some really nice humour. Gave this probably a, a week four out of five. And then I read The Hungry by Stephen W. Booth and Harry Shannon. So this is a zombie novel. You can see here the main character, she's a policewoman. Um, and she spends the entire novel in a wedding dress shooting zombies. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of, hey Biggie, it's kind of like a no holds barred zombie horror novel, uh, a lot of people getting killed along the way, some interesting stuff about how the virus came about, um, but I mainly picked this up because uh, Stephen Booth, and the, this is published by Genius Book Publishing, Stephen Booth is like their, their main man, um, and they, they have offered to republish uh, Meat, which is my novel, so I wanted to um, kind of read this as, to get an insight, I guess, into what their, the quality of their books is like and that sort of thing, and yeah, I did enjoy it, it's probably a strong three. 5 out of 5 for me. It's also the first of a uh, 5 part series so I may well continue on. We shall see. Um, but that's where I'm up to at the moment. Alright guys, got a few books to wrap up for you today. I have Find Them Dead by Peter James. So um, yeah, this is a crime novel. Basically it follows what happens. Uh, a guy gets caught bringing in six million pounds worth of cocaine into the UK and we sort of follow the trial and what happens after that. Um, there are people, shady people at work who are trying to influence the outcome of the trial and get a not guilty verdict um, and they will sort of stop at nothing. It's a Roy Grace novel, James is really good at writing this sort of book and I did enjoy this one for sure. I would give it a four out of five, full review coming soon. Then I read Office Suite by Alan Bennett. So this has got uh, green forms and a visit from Miss Prothero. These are two different plays. Um, they're both set in offices. It reminded me of Something Happened by Joseph Heller, um, but more British, more Northern, and with Alan Bennett's kind of a unique sort of writing style of sense of humour in it. Um, they're designed to be played together at the same event, and I'd love to go and see them both. They were very funny and also quite moving at times as well, um, and also just super insightful into the way that offices work. I gave this a 4 out of 5, and that's a 4 out of 5. 
Spotify for each of the individual plays as well. Wrap up. All right, I've got a few books to wrap up for you today. The first one is down here. It is La Lune by Isaac Asimov. So this is non-fiction about the moon. Um, it's basically aimed at children, but it's also in French. So that was kind of interesting. Loads of really good stuff. I learned a few new bits that I didn't know as well. And uh, yeah, I gave it a four out of five. I've really been enjoying these li this little sort of French series by Asimov. Oh, hello, Biggie. Okay. Then I read Stranger in a Strange Land by uh, Robert A. Heinlein. So I've been listening to this as an audio book while I do my jogging. Did enjoy, it took a while for me to get into it, but once I was into it, I did really enjoy it. Um, I think it's just one of those books where it took a while to sort of set the stage, but once it got there, it was a lot of fun and really cool stuff. It's almost a satire. It reminded me of what would happen if um, Joseph Heller wrote science fiction. So I thought that was pretty cool. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. And then I read Joanna Cannon, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. So I basically picked this up because it's Charles Heathcote here on Booktube. It's his, one of his favourite books. Um, and I can see why. So it's set in the summer of 1976, weirdly during a heat wave, which I'm reading it during a heat wave. You can probably even, you can, you can probably hear my fan. It's doing weird things to my voice. So that's right next to me. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like... I guess it's like a people study, it very much holds up a reflection to British culture in the 70s um, but it's also got like a mystery at the heart of it as well, my cat is here to say hello. Overall I did enjoy it, I gave it a 4 out of 5 and I'll be doing a full review of it soon so keep your eyes peeled for that. What have we got here, alright, well I read uh, The Hungry Tiger of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, so this is just the latest in the Oz series, book number 20, I've been kind of reading this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman, although I don't think he's continuing up to this point, I've got to be honest I didn't really take in too much of this one. I I have filmed a review but um, yeah it was just okay you, I could take it or leave it you know um, it's not left me particularly excited about continuing the plotting was pretty weak in this one although that's kind of a common theme amongst all of the Oz books anyway overall I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 then I read The Invention of Sound by Chuck Palahniuk so this one I gave a strong probably a 4.5 out of 5 to um, the plot in this one is basically there's someone who's a foley artist who are people that make the, the sounds for movies and uh, she does this by kind of capturing people screams only the difference is is she's actually murdering them so she's you know she says like normally people would get the sound of a school being crushed in crushed in by like smashing a coconut with a sledgehammer or whatever where she'll actually just smash a skull in and record it overall 4.5 out of 5 very visceral very good really did enjoy this one then we have La Pollution de l'Espace by Isaac Asimov. So this is a French Isaac Asimov book, um, and it's about, uh, sorry, no, it's called La Corse de l'Espace, de la rivalité à la coopération. And um, yeah, this is about, um, yeah, the race, to, the space race, basically. Um, rivalry and cooperation. So um, the Soviets and the Americans, mostly. I did actually read La Pollution de l'Espace as well, so I forgot to wrap that one up. That one was more about space pollution. Either way, both of them were really good. Strong 3.5 out of 5, and um, yeah, they were they were just good little reads about space. Non-fiction, designed mostly for kids, but really good for me to improve my French vocabulary and whatnot. Okay, what else have we got down here? All right, then I let, read uh, A Doll's House and Other Plays by Henrik Ibsen. Uh, I'd already read A Doll's House, so I read The League of Youth and The Lady from the Sea from this. Overall, probably 3.5 out of 5 each, and the same overall. Just really interesting plays. Um, I don't have too much more to say about them. You can check my review on my uh, website, danecobain.com, if you're interested. Then I read Encore de Nicolas by Gustinier Sempe. So this is a uh, French... Sort of children's, middle grade maybe book, lots of short stories about kids. Um, and this is actually used to teach people English. I mean, this is actually came from Manchester Grammar School book department. And um, yeah, this was sent to me by Charles, Charlie Heathcote, who uh, got this in his charity shop. And uh, I did enjoy it. I gave this probably a four out of five. It was very funny. Okay, then I read Poetry in Motion 2 by Alan Bennett. So um, this is kind of a follow up to Poetry in Motion 1. In that one, Bennett, took a look at a bunch of different poets and shared poems and then kind of told their life stories. In this one we have Alan Bennett, Jermaine Greer, John Mortimer and A.S. Byatt and instead of looking at individual poets they look at like sub subjects so uh, Bennett covers childhood, Jermaine Greer covers kind of like women's sexuality. It was good, it wasn't as good as the other one because to be honest so with this I, I think in my review I filmed a review of this and I read out one poem and the rest was just all stuff I tabbed from like the biographical notes which was really where I got the most sort of fun and enjoyment out 
about this one. I still give it a 3.5 out of 5, but it wasn't as good as the other one, mainly because I guess I just want to read biographical material about poets rather than just random essays and stuff. Okay, then I read The Carrier by Sophie Hanna. This is a thriller novel. It's one of her, what's the name? Uh, um, I can't even remember. One of her detective novels anyway. She's got like a whole series of them. Um, she's also uh, an accomplished poet and writes the new Agatha Christie continuations as well. This was okay. Um, basically, somebody finds out that her ex-partner, or the, well, not even that, her ex-love interest, has confessed to a murder and she doesn't think he's done it so she sets off to kind of investigate why not a huge amount really stuck with this with me from this one i have reviewed it so you can keep your eyes peeled for that but overall it was just okay it was like 3.5 out of 5 pretty standard for a, a crime slash thriller novel then we have the man who died twice by richard osmond so this is the second thursday murder club mystery i read this as a buddy read with charles heathcote i think i enjoyed it more than he did um there's, it's kind of humorous, comedy, quirky, cosy mystery, which is very similar to what Charlie and myself both write. Um, but I think I just got on with it better than Charlie did. He found it difficult to suspend his disbelief, I think. Um, I, to be honest, I found it quite easy, but that's because I do in, in murder mysteries and stuff. Like, I don't try and figure out who did it and the reasons behind it and stuff. I'm just kind of along for the ride. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I probably gave it like a four out of five. And then I read The Blade Artist by Irvin Welsh. So this is um, the book number four, apparently, in like the Train Spotting series, effectively. It follows Francis Begbie. He's uh, become an artist. He's kind of got out of prison, gone to America, become an artist. And he's the Blade Artist because he makes these like celebrity images and then just fuck shit up like he'll cut them up with scalpels and burn them and all of this stuff and he's become an accomplished artist from doing that and uh yeah he heads back to scotland because somebody gets killed and um he may or may not fall back into ba old bad habits that's all i'm going to tell you about this one overall i did enjoy the blade artist quite a lot actually i give it a four out of five and a strong one all right everybody so it is now it's actually september so uh, i guess those are all the books that i read in august as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you've read any, any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button for more and i'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye